Celtic Tree of Life is one of the most iconic and recognizable symbols in all of mythology. It was well known that it was sacred, at least in concept, to many of the old Celtic tribes of Western Europe, the people of Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and so on. But why is it so sacred and endearing? Well, it very likely has something to do with the most ancient ancestor of all the Celtic tribes. Why don't you grab yourself a drink, grab a seat. I've got a story for you, my friends. The Celtic people have always lived alongside nature. And while there are some larger empires like the Gauls, these large conglomerates usually formed out of necessity, like to fight off an invasion of Romans. Rarely did large Celtic nations form prior to the formation of the Roman Empire, at least not very large in contrast to other large nations of the time. When we look at the information around the Celts the historians are able to gift us, we find that much of their culture was centered around harvests. Now that in and of itself is not unique. Most people need to eat and we all get very excited about the idea of not starving to death. But the Celts took this a whole step further. Every harvest had a festival and it was a spectacle. Great bonfires, dances, blessings of the lands and forests. And while the Celts were not the only people to do this, they were certainly one of the most avid and extravagant in the way they did. Even when we look at the myths that surround Ireland and its people, the most famous of all the myths in Ireland has to do with a cattle raid stealing prized livestock and a massive battle that takes place because of it. On top of that, one of the most revered figures in all of Celtic mythology is the forest god Cernunos the forest king and god of all the woods. He is said to both help and slay travelers, to offer protection and to destroy villages who cut down too many trees. Some even believe that he is the protector of forests all over the world and the power that feeds the trees. But what does all this have to do with the Celtic Tree of Life? Well, it is very important for us to understand how closely it was believed our Celtic ancestors were to the natural world. Most of the creatures and gods and titans in the old myths are an embodiment of natural forces. Even the most prominent group of all the Celtic wise men were known for their closeness to nature. I am of course referring to the Druids. Now, in modern neo-paganism, the bar for being a Druid is pretty much the same as it is for any other religion. You read a book, you say a pledge, and you tell as many people as possible that you belong to that religion. It's pretty much like being vegan. But in the old days, there was a little bit more to it than that. In the recorded ages, druids were wise men and sages that oversaw religious practices and ceremony, many times being keepers of cultural practice. If we go back a little farther, to before the druids were a people, to when the first of these sages got their names, we come to what is almost literally a door to the past. Now this is controversial and some may disagree with me, but how our clan recognizes the word druid is it has two roots. The first part being the word deru, which means trees, but more specifically it referred to oak trees. This word was also believed to mean door or passageway of some kind. And the latter part of the word is vaid, which means to know or one who knows. So the word druid literally translates to one who knows the trees or one who knows the door. These men were those who understood the ways of nature and the ways of our ancestors. Some were even believed to speak with the trees and the god of the trees, Kerenunos. And this group was preceded by another group called the Arwin, or the Imbas. But that is a story for another time, and is more particular to our clan's kept stories than what you'll find in common myth. Now, this goes even deeper than just a connection to nature. The Fomorians, the ancient titans and ancestors of Ireland, were pure forces of nature, controlling fate, the trees, the rivers, the oceans, the water, and knowledge, just to name a few of the things they were said to have dominion over. They were the primordial occupants of Ireland before the Gales, before the Celts, before the Fearbolg, and before the British. For all of them, the Fomorians were there. 
but the most famous occupants of Ireland are said to have invaded twice. The first time, they were repelled by the Fomorians and they were humans. But they left and returned with magic that they received from far away. Now, this could have been Tirnanog as the bridge between Tirnanog and Ireland still existed at this time, or it could have been the Northlands, where in our stories the tribes of the Aesir, the Vanir and the Jotnar existed at around the same time. Either way, this is where the tribe of Danu, the Tuatha Dé Danann, gained their magic. Humans who left Ireland and came back with mighty magical power. They gained dominion over natural law, returned to the magical isle of Eriu, the Era, and conquered the Fomorians, being locked in battle with them for hundreds or possibly even thousands of years, eventually even having children with those ancient beings. And those born of the tribe of Danu and the Fomorians would become the gods and heroes of Celtic and Irish mythology, as well as the keeper of many a grand legend. So now we know that the gods, magic and nature of Celtic mythology are all deeply linked to nature and natural law. But who were the ancestors? In the oldest myth, the Fomorians were not titans, though they are described as being monstrous. By our clan stories, they were in fact the first of the Celtic tribes the first humans to walk the earth. And the story of where they came from in common myth is vague at best. So this is where I will take you specifically into the oral stories passed down through our clan's traditions. To fill in the gaps, if you will. According to our clan's myths, the first living beings in the world were the trees. The trees rose up from the grounds as the waters and land separated, and from the first great tree spawned twelve other trees. And from those twelve trees spawned the great forests of the world. And from those forests came the flowers and plants and fruits, and the fauna and insects that would crawl upon the ground, not terribly dissimilar from the description of biblical creation. And then from the bark and branches of those first trees and forests were born the first ancestors. They were the Fomorians, the Jotnar, and others. Many being the first tribes of the groups that the Greeks and the Romans would eventually call the Keltoi, or the Celts. The Celtic Tree of Life is not only a symbol that represents the balance between life and death, the cycles of fate and destiny, of birth and decay, but it is also a picture of where our people came from, and in a way, it is an image, a depiction, of our earliest ancestor.